you ever wondered? Hello everyone. Welcome back to Inquisitive Creation. My name is Gilo and I will be your trusted companion to explain things you ever wondered about but does not exactly know what they are. Today, we're diving into a topic that many of us shy away from but one that touches us all. I'm referring to the natural but tragic process of death. We often hear about the medical side of dying, but there are certain things your doctor might not openly discuss. In this video, we'll explore 10 things you may not know about the dying process, what actually happens to the body, the mind, and the senses in those final moments. Some of these facts may surprise you, some may comfort you, and others might change the way you think about the end of life. Whether you're here out of curiosity, concern for a loved one, or your own introspection, we hope this video sheds light on the often misunderstood journey we all eventually face. While some deaths are sudden, many occur gradually, especially for those with terminal illnesses or advanced age. Death is not typically an immediate event. It's a process that the body undergoes, marked by several physiological changes. Typically, in the time leading up to death, a person's skin may turn pale due to a drop in blood pressure. Their fingers might become cold or take on a bluish tint. You may notice a weak pulse, and eventually, their breathing may become irregular, signaling that the end is near. However, the sequence and intensity of these symptoms can vary from person to person. As death approaches, changes in breathing are often one of the most noticeable signs. During this time, breathing may become irregular with pauses that can last 15 to 20 seconds. These gaps can be unsettling for loved ones, as it may seem like the person has stopped breathing entirely. However, this is a normal part of the dying process. The irregular breathing pattern is a common occurrence as the body begins to shut down. While distressing to witness, it is a natural and expected progression towards the end of life. Death typically occurs into distinct stages. The first stage, known as clinical death, happens when a person's heart stops beating. During this time, the body ceases to function, but brain cells remain alive for a short period due to residual oxygen in the bloodstream. This stage lasts about four to six minutes before the brain begins to suffer irreversible damage. The second stage is biological death, which occurs when brain cells start to die due to the lack of oxygen. At this point, the body can no longer be revived. While resuscitation is sometimes possible during clinical death, once biological death sets in, it is permanent and irreversible. Television shows like ER and Grey's Anatomy often depict cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR as a highly successful life-saving technique, leading many to believe it works in most cases. A study published in the Emergency Medicine Journal found that 95% of 500 emergency department patients had learned about CPR from TV, with more than half believing its success rate to be around 75%. In reality, CPR is far less effective, especially for those with chronic illnesses. Research shows that overall survival rates after CPR are about 12% for out-of-hospital cardiac arrests and 24-40% for in-hospital arrests. While CPR can indeed save lives, it also carries risks that can impact a person's health and quality of life. The study's authors emphasize the importance of discussing the potential risks and benefits of CPR with your health care provider and loved ones, especially when considering end-of-life care. It's commonly believed that hearing is the final sense to fade before death. Research published in Scientific Reports supports this, showing that the auditory systems of hospice patients still responded to sounds similarly to those of healthy individuals, even just hours before passing. Doctors explain that hearing is a passive sense, allowing it to persist even as other functions decline. Because of this, families are encouraged to speak to their loved ones in their final moments. Even as blood pressure drops and consciousness fades, they can still hear what we're saying. Sharing words of love, comfort, and support during this time can be meaningful, as hearing may be one of the last connections they have with the world. During life, the brain continuously sends signals to control bodily functions, including those of the bladder and bowels. 
Upon death, these signals cease, causing the muscles that typically remain contracted to relax. The neck of the bladder and the sphincter are usually in a constant state of contraction, but when neural signals stop, these muscles release. As a result, it's not uncommon for a person to urinate or defecate shortly after death. This is a natural occurrence as the body releases the contents of the bladder and bowels, no longer regulated by the brain. While it may seem surprising, it's simply another aspect of the body's shutdown process. A common misconception is that morphine is given to dying patients to hasten death, but this is not the case. Morphine is not administered to induce death. Instead, morphine is used to alleviate the discomfort associated with the dying process. As death approaches, a person's blood pressure drops, reducing oxygen flow to their organs. This can lead to a condition known as air hunger, where the body struggles to breathe, resulting in gasping for air. This can be distressing for both the patient and their loved ones. Morphine plays a crucial role here. The right dose helps to relieve the sensation of air hunger, allowing the person to breathe more calmly and comfortably. After death, the brain is the first organ to begin breaking down, followed by other organs. Despite the overall cessation of bodily functions, some parts of the body, particularly bacteria in the intestines, continue to live and contribute to the decomposition process known as putrefaction. This natural decay is a key part of the body's breakdown. This process produces a very distinct and potent odor, often referred to as the smell of death. Even within a half hour after death, you can detect this smell in the room. This odor is a clear indicator of the decomposition that is underway, driven by the action of bacteria still present in the body. In movies and TV shows, it's often depicted that people see their entire life flash before their eyes just before they die. Interestingly, there might be some scientific basis for this phenomenon. A study published in 2022 provides evidence that supports this idea. Researchers documented a case where an 87-year-old patient, who was in the hospital following a fall and bleeding on the brain, experienced a sudden burst of brain activity just seconds before his heart stopped. While doctors were conducting brain scans on the patient, who later died of cardiac arrest, they noticed a surge of brainwave activity associated with memory and dreaming that continued for about 30 seconds after his heart had stopped. This activity suggests that the brain might replay memories as life ends. Previous studies on rodents have also shown increased brain wave activity shortly after cardiac arrest, supporting the hypothesis that similar memory replay could occur in humans. The mystery of what happens to the mind after death has intrigued researchers for years. A study published in September 2023 in the journal Resuscitation offers some fascinating insights. The study involved more than 550 cardiac arrest patients across United States and British hospitals who received CPR after their hearts stopped beating. While fewer than 10% of these patients survived, of those who did, about 40% reported experiencing some level of consciousness during CPR. These survivors described vivid experiences, including sensations of being separated from their bodies, observing events without feeling pain, and reflecting on their relationships and life choices. Remarkably, brain scans showed patterns associated with thought and memory activity up to an hour into CPR. This is the first large study to suggest that these recollections and brain wave changes may be indicative of universal, shared elements of so-called near-death experiences. There you have it. Thank you for joining us on this journey through some of the lesser-known aspects of dying. While death is a topic that many find difficult to discuss, understanding what happens in those final moments can provide comfort and clarity. We hope this video has given you valuable insights and perhaps even eased some of the fears or uncertainties you might have had. Remember, death is a natural part of life and having open conversations about it can help us all better prepare for and support our loved ones through the process. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never miss out on content like this. Until next time, this is your friend Gilo signing off from Inquisitive Creation. 
Thanks so much for watching.